Hey Wargamers, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. This episode isn't going to be a normal painting guide, in fact there's going to be no painting at all. Instead, you're going to be watching me learn to sculpt. If that's of no interest to you, go ahead and skip this one and watch the next video. If you've been following my Frostgrave battle reports, you know I've been using Reaper Mouselings for my warband, and I actually wanted to create a duck-themed warband instead. Since there are very, very few duck-themed miniatures out there, I'm going to just make my own. Basically, I want this duck in a bit of a running pose. It is just a practice piece. I'm not planning on this one being in production or even really hitting a tabletop. It's just something to learn on. But I did want a running pose, and because of that, I thought it'd be clever to have him only standing on one foot. But the problem with that is it made the armature spin a lot in the cork. It didn't hold still. You'll see I super glue it down repeatedly, and that still doesn't even really help. It just keeps on spinning and wobbling a little bit. It would have made more sense to have a second piece of the armature stick into the cork, even if it wasn't part of the final model. So I'm not claiming here to be a professional sculptor, in fact this is probably the second or third miniature I've tried to sculpt at all, and the first one I've tried to sculpt well and to completion, and so there's definitely a lot of mistakes I make here, and I'm going to try and highlight them as I go, more as a cautionary tale for others. There's a few things I get right though, one of them is starting with green stuff over the armature. I'm actually going to be doing the sculpting later with a product called Bees Putty. You're probably familiar with green stuff, which is a two-part epoxy, and you have a couple hours at most to work with it. Bees Putty instead is sort of a plastic that cures in the oven, so you need to bake it to make it set. Because of that, you have infinite working time. You can work on the model weeks or even months later, and you'll still have a nice supple surface to work with. So it lets you have a little more time to work on the miniature, it lets you break it up throughout the day or whatever. And it also means that once you're done an area, you can bake it, so you're not going to accidentally get a fingerprint or something in it like you would with green stuff. One thing I learned a while ago is that green stuff does not stick to wire armatures very well on its own. It tends to slide off the wires because the wires themselves don't have a lot of grip. And one thing I learned is that you can mix a little bit of plastic cement in with your green stuff. Just regular hobby glue used for plastic models. And it makes the green stuff really, really tacky and a little bit liquidy. And it makes it really stick to wires and literally everything else. It kind of ends up caking my fingers when I'm done this but it also really, really slicks the wire. And what that does is give me something easier for the clay to stick onto later. Any green stuff or bees putty I add later sticks to this green stuff layer, no problem, where it probably would have just slid off the wire. You can't see them here, but I'm working from a couple of rough sketches for this character, but really most of it's just kind of being done as I go from my head. And honestly, that's not the best way to sculpt a character because it really means I'm not gonna get great proportions as I go. This is really more for me to practice the technical skills of sculpting rather than getting all the proportions right and so on. But you will see once in a while, I'll grab an X-Acto knife and just cut away areas, especially later on after I bake the head. I decide the head is too big and I basically sit there and whittle it down for a while. One thing I learned from another sculptor is you can never be afraid to cut away a part you're unhappy with. Even if you've put a lot of time and effort into a certain part, if it doesn't really match the aesthetic or the scale of the model, it's not worth keeping it. You're better off cutting it off, either clipping it away, shaving it down, whatever you need to do to get rid of it, and then just starting over again on that piece. So here I'm creating a basis for the one foot that's touching the ground, and I'm hoping this is going to stop the wire from pivoting. It really doesn't, but I was hoping so. So because I only used a single wire for the armature, this model only has one arm right now. My plan was to add the second foot and the other arm in a running pose and sculpt them separately and basically add them on after the fact. I do have armatures set up for those on my desk at the moment, but they're not featured in this video because that was done after I recorded this. 
As I mentioned before, though, I probably should have used two wires, and then I would have had an armature for each of the arms right on the miniature as well. At this point, I'm done creating the base model with green stuff. There's really no detail to it because I want to add that with the bees putty later. What I'm going to do here is bake it in a soup can with a halogen lamp for about 15 minutes. This will rapidly cure the green stuff. It's equivalent to about four hours of waiting in a matter of 15 minutes. Baking green stuff does give it a little bit of a brownish tint, especially if you leave it in too long. And if it's not mixed well, it can make the yellow parts really, really expand. So sometimes you might see little bubbles in your miniature when you pull it out. I should mention that if you've used any plastic parts with your green stuff at all, like if you're doing conversions, never, ever, ever, ever bake it because the plastic will just completely melt. But if you're working on a piece that's purely metal and green stuff, you can go ahead and bake it with no problems. So now I've taken some bees putty plastic and I've just mixed it in my hand a little bit. Mixing's the wrong word, I just kneaded it around to make it softer. There's no mixing required because it is just one chemical, there's not a two part component like there is with green stuff. But I'm just rolling it out into small balls or small flat pieces and just bulking out the miniature at this point so that I have a surface to actually start adding the detail to. Here I decided that the neck was getting a little bit too thick, so I grabbed one of my sculpting tools and just started scraping away some of the bees putty to make it a little bit thinner. So here I start detailing the eyes, and one thing to mention is I probably should have actually made the eyes separately, put them on the face as two sort of flat orbs first, and then sculpted all the other face detail around them so that they're a constant sort of fixed point. This really wasn't the best way to create the eyes, and it's one of the things I learned while doing this. The tools I'm using here are called color shapers. They're basically silicone paintbrushes. 
So they have a soft tip made of silicone and it means it has a little bit of give and a little bit of pliancy. So when you're pushing it into a sculpting putty like bees putty or green stuff, it gives a little bit and it gives you a smoother piece or a smoother transition than if you were pushing it with a metal tool. It does mean you have to kind of repeat the same actions over and over again to get a lot of detail, but it does lead to some smoother transitions than using a sharp metal tool does.
Now that I've got most of the green stuff bulked out, I'm going to bake it again so that I don't accidentally mess anything up. It's one of the great parts of using bees putties. You have as long as you need until you want to set it in place, and that's when you can bake it. So this is where I mentioned deciding that the head was too big. I'm just taking an X-Acto knife now and cutting away the baked bees putty to make the head a little bit thinner and the neck a little bit thinner. This is actually going to cut it right down to the green stuff in a few places, which I'll have to correct later. Once it's baked, bees putty is basically rock hard and it can be sanded, drilled, filed, anything like that. I'm mostly scraping it away with an X-Acto knife here, but I did also off camera use a regular hobby file to smooth it down in a few places. Now that the head is a little bit smaller and thinned out again, I'm going to start actually adding the details for the beak. I'm rolling out even bits of bees putty so that the left and right cheeks are the same size.
I want to thicken the beak up a little bit underneath each eye, so I'm going to roll out again two small, equal size balls so that the amount going underneath each eye is equivalent.
and that basically wraps it up for part one because I've now got to work on the additional limbs that aren't really featured here because their armatures aren't attached. I'm not super happy with the shapes of the beak, but especially the cheek areas, and I might cut those off and sculpt new ones later. I haven't really decided yet. As always, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've been inspired to try out some sculpting on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you liked that one, why don't you check out some battle reports right over here, or check out more epic hobby content right over here. If you really like what I'm doing and want to support my creative efforts, I really urge you to become one of my supporters on Patreon. You can find out more about that right here. Thanks for watching.